big news in the Type 1 world that a lot of people are excited about. I'm Jamie Lowe, and I'm going to get you up to speed on the Omnipod 5. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Like I said, my name is Jamie Lowe and I have an itchy lip, so I'm going to get rid of that. And here on this channel, uh, I talk all things Type 1 diabetes, tech, news, new tech developments, things that I'm excited about, my life with Type 1, and I throw a little bit of travel in that too. So if you like what you see and you that sounds like you would like what you... If that sounds like you would like the content on my channel, then do hit that... <laughs> then do hit the subscribe button. Uh, regardless, whether you like me or not, um, please leave a like because it helps me um, no end. But yes, there is big news and the Omnipod 5 automated delivery system has been cleared by the US Food and Drug Administration, which most people know as the FDA. Now, this is a US um, regulatory body um, so it doesn't affect us here in the UK, but it is, I guess, a precursor uh, to what could be on the way for us here in England. Now, if you didn't know already, the FDA is a regulatory body which controls a number of things from bottled water to medical devices. And it's important to mention, like I did just mention, like all sovereign regulatory bodies, their remit, so their sort of powers, only stretch as far as that country's borders. So. This really only affects people in the US so far, but it does hint that other bodies will follow suit. So for people like me in the UK, we are still waiting for the MHRA's decision. Now, why is this particular decision important? Well, it's the world's first tubeless automated insulin delivery system. It includes a tubeless insulin pump, a Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor, and a smartphone app. The pod is a tubeless wearable insulin pump with the AID algorithm embedded into it. Now the pod can be worn for uh, up to three days and can hold 200 units of rapid acting insulin. Now you couple that with the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor and that app, uh, which uh, comes pre-downloaded on a controller provided by Inla or can be downloaded onto a compatible Android smartphone, so no iPhones, Oh, really? <gasps> iPhone users, you're going to have to... You, so iPhone users are going to have to use the PDM. Is it a PDM or a PDA? I can't remember what podders call it. I think it's a PDM. Mm, what does that even stand for? Personal Diabetes Machine. Anyway, so that app is only going to be available on Android smartphones initially. The Omnipod uh, 5 app allows the user to have full smartphone control over both basal and bolus rates for the system, though the system is currently designed to only work with the Dexcom, CG, uh, the Dexcom G6 CGM integration with the G7 CGM, which isn't currently FDA cleared, is in development. Additionally, Insulin and Abbott have a partnership, so there is some hope that integration with the Freestyle Libra, uh, I think the three Freestyle Libre 3 pretty much works like a CGM. That may be in the pipeline. So let's talk about this star feature. I'm going to get comfortable for this. Let's talk about this star feature that sets uh, this pod apart. All AID, automatic insulin delivery systems, require an algorithm that allows the CGM and the pump to talk to one another to adjust the insulin dosing based on a person's glucose level. In Omnipod 5, the algorithm called Smart Adjust is embedded into the pod itself. And this is the first AID system with the algorithm actually integrated into the actual pump, which allows the user to continue in automated mode, even if the smartphone or the controller is not within range or loses battery. This is also the first AID system with a patch pump versus a pump with tubes and the first AID system to give the user full smartphone control. Now the user can customize their glucose target in uh, 10 mg DL intervals from 110 to 150 mg DL. Now those are US measurements. So 10 mg DL, I don't know what that means, um, you know, the little suffix, but I know that mmol is millimoles per litre, um, so that's in 0.6 increments. So uh, 150 is 8.3, 
uh, and then 110 is 6.1. So essentially what that means is uh, you can have a lower range of 6.1 and a higher range of 8.3, which I guess is quite tight control, isn't it? I mean, uh, my control, it doesn't often sit within those two ranges, but that's what the these automatic insulin delivery systems are all about. That's why we need them, that's why we want them. And the system's algorithm takes into account the amount of insulin on board, um, and um, it makes the adjustments, um, you know, with that information. The system can be operated in several modes. Automated mode, which adjusts insulin delivery automatically and does require a CGM connection. Manual mode, which delivers insulin at a pre-programmed rate, regardless of whether the CGM is connected. And activity mode, which allows the user to temporarily set the glucose target for 150 mg over DL, remember that's 8.3, and suspend insulin delivery. This mode is designed for exercising or or other periods of increased insulin sensitivity, or when there is a high risk of hypoglycemia. The CGM and the pod are connected via Bluetooth, and since the Smart Adjust algorithm is housed actually within the pod, even if, I'm gonna reiterate this, your controller or your phone were, were to run out of power, or you went outside of range of Bluetooth, the system can still run in the automated mode as intended. Now, I think this is probably one of the things that's gonna make this pod um, so special. So let's take a look at the science then. In the Omnipod 5 pivotal trials, children aged six to 13 improved their average time in range from 52% to 68%. And that's almost four extra hours per day in range and the A1Cs um, fell from 7.7 .7 to 7%. So in the group 14 years and older, they improved their average time in range from 65% to 74%, which is an over two additional hours per day in range. And the A1Cs dropped from 7.2 to 6.8. Now, both groups also showed major decreases in the amount of time spent above range, which they class as above 180 mg DL. Let's see what that is. That is 10. So that is 10. So they decreased their time above 10. So, I mean, this is exciting news for the quarter of a million Omnipod users. I believe that figure is global. Um, and I know a few of them myself. I know a few pod users and hopefully they watch my channel. So uh, I'd like to know what you think about this news. Are you excited? Is it going to be so super cool to have um, an automatic insulin delivery system, you know, on your arm? Now, my thoughts on this is that this is the first time that I've considered getting a pod um, because the tech is so sort of out there and, you know, unrivaled, I guess. Um, with other pumps. I'm talking about the tubeless AID here because I've got a tandem T-Slim and if you are lucky enough to have a Dexcom G6 then that will work in a similar way but that is tubed and I'm still really really annoyed um, about sleeping with my insulin pump and you know getting it caught indoors and having it sort of dangle from me when I get up um, from sitting down. So um, I always would want to avoid a pod uh, First of all, because I just didn't, you know, want to have it on me. I always thought that it was quite big. Um, but this pod, I'm not sure about the size, but it does look a little more sort of sleeker than the Omnipod Dash. Um, and honestly, um, if it was an option for me for my next insulin pump, then I definitely would consider it. But that is all from me today. Don't forget to hit subscribe because I'm going to be talking in my next video about the Eversense CGM system, which has just got also FDA approval. Um, and then in the video after that, I'm going to be talking about the Tandem T-Slim iPhone app, which is on the way. So lots of tech uh, to talk about over the next coming days and weeks. Almost too much for me to keep on top of. So that's why I'm a bit late to the game with the Omnipod news, but there you go. Uh, that's the sort of stuff you can expect from me on this channel. I've also relaunched my podcast. Uh, it's called Jamie and the Broken Pancreas. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. And um, I'm going to be telling you the story in my most recent episode uh, about my crap freestyle Libra sensor that I've got on right now. It's really not good. It's, it missed a major hypo, um, especially with the like worst storm in 30 years that we're having here in the UK and a blown down fence that I had to like basically chop up so it didn't kill someone. Um, I've had quite a rough day with my freestyle Libra, but that's all from me. I hope to see you next time. Bye bye for now.